Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCA and creator of the CCNA Route Switch Version 3 Complete Video Course. And one of the topics on the Version 3 exam is WAN topologies. How do different sites interconnect that are geographically separated? We're going to take a look at that in this video. Stay tuned. In this video, we want to talk about three different types of WAN topologies, beginning with point-to-point -point networks. A point-to-point -point network is, as the name suggests, a network that goes from one point in the network to another point in the network. We're interconnecting two sites, perhaps. We've got a router at each site, and we've got a direct connection between those two different sites. So if I send traffic from one of the sites, it goes over this point-to-point -point connection, ends up at the other site. We might have some sort of a lease line that connects us from one site to the other site. And if we have something like a T1 connection, as an example, maybe we're running the point-to-point -point protocol. We're running PPP over this connection. That's our layer two protocol. But please understand that even though we talk about a point-to-point -point network being this connection between two sites, and we typically picture it as a physical connection, it could be a logical connection. I could connect to a remote office going through the internet. Now that's not really a point-to-point -point connection, but I could connect to that remote site and set up something like a virtual private network, a VPN connection. So logically, this looks like a point-to-point -point network. Another wide area network type we have is a hub and spoke network. You might remember earlier on in your studies, we talked about some different types of topologies. And one of those types was a star topology where we had a uh, ethernet switch at the center of that star. And then we had other devices like a PC, a printer, an IP phone, a wireless access point. We had those different types of devices connecting back to the center, back to the ethernet switch. Well, this is very similar in the wide area network world. The center of this star, we're going to call it a hub and spoke topology. The center of the star is the hub. And we've got spokes that radiate out from that hub. Maybe the hub is the site that gets the most traffic. Maybe that's the headquarters site. And we're connecting out to, let's say, some remote sales offices. There's not that much need for one remote sales office to talk to another remote sales office. So normally the traffic is going to go something like this. The traffic's going to go from the hub, let's say, up to spoke A. But Occasionally, we might want to send traffic from, let's say, the spoke B site over to the spoke C site. Can we do that? There's no direct connection between those two. Yes, we can. It's not an optimal path because we have to go through the hub and then we go down to spoke C. Now, let's sum up some of these characteristics of a hub and spoke network. Because we've only got links out from the hub to each site, that's fairly cost effective for multiple locations. We don't have to have a full mesh of connections. We'll talk about a full mesh in just a moment. We could though, as we saw going from spoke B to spoke C, we could have a suboptimal path. There might be a little extra delay in the transmission. And that hub site, that's potentially a single point of failure. If that goes down, no side is talking to any other site. And the other type of WAN network type that we want to discuss is something we've already discussed. We talked about this earlier on in your studies. We talked about having a full mesh of interconnections between multiple sites. We said that we could have a full mesh of connections between Ethernet switches. Typically, we don't. Typically, we're not that concerned about optimal pathing between Ethernet switches because they forward traffic at speeds approaching wire speed anyway. So there's really not a big delay that we have to factor in if we have to go through one switch to get to another switch. We do probably want to have some redundant links in the switch topology, but we probably aren't going to have a full mesh. So we talked about the full mesh wide area network type earlier, and you might remember the formula that I gave you. It was the n times n minus 1 divided by 2 formula, where n was the number of sites or the number of devices that we wanted to form a full mesh of interconnections with. And we said, like we see in this example here on screen, if I've got these five different sites, it's going to take 10 interconnections to fully mesh those sites together. Remember the formula n times n minus 1 divided by 2? n is the number of sites, so 5 times 5 minus 1 is 5 times 4, that's 20. Divided by 2, that's 10. 10 links to fully mesh 5 sites. But this does not scale very well. If I want to have 10 sites, suddenly we're 10 times 10 minus 1, 10 times 9 is 90. Divided by 2, suddenly we're at 45 interconnections to fully mesh 10 sites together. So this does not scale terribly well. On the positive side, we do get optimal pathing. We go directly from the source to the destination. But because of the extra links, there's a higher expense as compared to something like a hub and spoke topology. Also keep in mind, 
mind, this is something we mentioned earlier as well, we don't have to have a full mesh topology, we could have a partial mesh topology, where we selectively remove certain links from this full mesh topology. We might not talk that much between our bottom sites. Let's get rid of that link. They can still talk to one another. They just might have to relay their traffic through another site. So to sum up, we've talked about three different WAN topology types in this video. We had point-to-point -point networks, we had hub and spoke networks, and full mesh networks. If you want to learn even more about Cisco routing and switching technologies, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen and I'll send you more training videos. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.